We need to take a look into the future. We've got to have the future well designed. The future is called the promise. And here's what we teach in our leadership series. The promise of the future can be an awesome force for your own future. The promise of the future, designing the future. There's two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension and the other is with anticipation. I promise you in my travels around the world, most people face the future with apprehension. And here's why, they don't have it well designed. They've sort of left that up to someone else to fix. But here's the best way to face the future with anticipation. And you can, in, you can face the future with anticipation if the future is clear, if the future is well designed. In setting goals, it's very simple. Number one, decide what you want. You just take a little time. You sit down and say, what do I want? What kind of skills do I want? What kind of income do I want for the future? Where would I like to go? Places I'd like to visit? Uh, habits I'd like to acquire? Skills I'd like to have? You just take a little time to think about what you want. Economics, friendships, people you'd like to meet, places you'd like to go, you just take some time. And then I suggest when you've thought about what you want for the future, make a list. Just jot it all down. It's a, really a very simple process. Have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life. The key to having a vision is to have a dream. They say in the song, you've got to have a dream if you want to make a dream come true. And you can fulfill your dreams. All the great movers and shakers throughout all of history have been dreamers. They've been people with dreams. They've been people with visions. All leaders have vision. In the book of Solomon, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And the metaphysical meaning of that is that where people lack vision, they perish inside because they lose the excitement and the thrill of life. And what most people do because of negative experiences, because of fear of failure and so on, is they, if they have a vision at all, they tone it down so it's so small and so safe that it doesn't turn them on. It doesn't excite them and they wonder why life isn't exciting. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, if the best way to predict the future is to create it which means to have a vision, and even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience. At one time, when we were small, we had a vision of being grown up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. And as we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this, is that we always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So dream big dreams. Setting goals is a very important part of our life's process. Guess how many people have a constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the purpose of their goal? The answer is very few. In fact, if you will do this, you will become among the few who do that become the envy of all who watch. It's a basic fundamental. In fact, if you will work hard on setting goals, put together a plan for setting goals, reevaluate them, rearrange them, constantly talk about them, go over them again and again, I tell you what this process will do in my personal opinion. It'll put you in what's known as the top 5%. And if you want to be successful, if you want your life to really change in major ways, this is one of the fundamentals. A constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the purpose of your goals. If I was only given five minutes to speak to you, and I could only convey one thought that would help you to be more successful, I would tell you to write down your goals, make plans to achieve them, and work on your plans every single day. This advice, if you followed it, would be of more help to you than anything else you could ever learn. Many university graduates have told me that this simple concept has been more valuable to them than four years of study. This idea has changed my life and the lives of millions of other people. It will change yours as well. Setting goals is plain hard work. 
It's work. I know it's work. That's why a lot of people just let it slide. It's work. Many people work hard on their job, but they don't work hard on their future. They just let that slide. And the work involved is making plans. I know most people don't. I understand that. But don't let that be you. Guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night. Plan, plan, plan. And the guy's feet Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you've got to be better than sincere, working hard. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good planner. Somebody once wisely said, the people who fail to plan are planning to fail. Well said. Put your goals in your journal. Because one of the major people you want to study is yourself. So here's the list of goals I put together three weeks ago. Here's the list of goals I put together two years ago. Here's some of the changes I made, rearrangement of my priorities. I scratched these off, I put these on, I've gotten these. Study your accomplishments, study what your desires are. Put them on paper, write them down. Here's another reason for writing your goals down. It shows you're serious about doing better. And to do better, you gotta get serious. You don't have to be grim, but you must be serious. I used to have the affliction called passive hope. It's an affliction. It's bad. Probably what's even worse than that is happy hope. Now that is really bad. That's bad. Happy hope. So get serious about your goals, put them on paper, write them down. There's all kinds, his goals, her goals, their goals, business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this that if you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. And here's one of the important phrases of the evening. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your handshake. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. Your goals affect the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. Now, some people have goals, but they have such lousy goals. The effect is bad. I asked a guy one time, what are your goals for this month? The guy said, look, if I could just scrape up enough money to pay these lousy bills. That was his goal. I'm not saying it isn't a goal. It's a goal, but it's such a lousy goal, the effect is bad. You don't jump out of bed on Monday morning and say, oh boy, another chance to go out and scrape up the money to pay my lousy bills. So you don't do that. Usually you say, oh, not another Monday. And some people have so given up on life, they have joined the thank God it's Friday. Well, how sad. Everybody hopes things will get better. Everybody hopes. Poor people hope. That ought to tell you something. It means the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. People with goals on which they've set their hearts and minds are always moving toward those goals. Even while we sleep, our deep minds are apparently working on the project. That's why we often awaken early in the morning with a solution to a problem that offered repeated resistance to our conscious attempts to solve it, clearly and simply in mind. It's interesting and often quite astonishing how people with goals tend to live longer than people without them. You just set the date back, and you set the date back until eventually you do. And then everybody will turn around and say how lucky you are. But don't tell other people. Now, here's the third reason why people don't set goals. They don't know how. 
You say, well, that's ridiculous. People don't know how. But here's the biggest mistake that we make. It's something that is so important in life, like goal setting. We think they already know how to do it. And I say to my audiences, I've said this for many years, and I'll say it to you, if you really know how to set goals properly, then you must be very wealthy. You must be a very successful person. Because if you're not a very successful person, if you're not doing extremely well in life, then something's wrong with the way you're setting goals. Because people who become accomplished, skilled goal setters inevitably accomplish an enormous amount in life. So don't ever make the assumption, the false assumption, that I already know how, therefore I don't have to learn. The great majority of people haven't been taught, and the great tragedy is that the great majority of people think they already know, so they don't try to learn. And finally, the last reason why people don't set goals is they don't understand the importance of goal setting. If you were raised in a family and you were never told at a young age how important, how vital, how indispensable goal setting is to your success, then you would have grown up without even understanding that goal setting was important. If you were raised in a family where people didn't talk about goals around the family dinner table, where family friends didn't have goals, where the people you went to school with didn't have goals, when you went up to school and the teachers didn't have goals, you could get out of school, as I did, travel, be an adult, move around the world, and never know how important goal setting is. I've met people who started goal setting at 35 and 45 and 55, and they accomplished more in the next couple of years than they'd accomplished in the previous decade. And so can you. One of the major reasons for setting goals is for what they make of you in achieving them. My teacher advised me when I first got started at age 25, he said, Jim, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? He said, it's got a nice ring to it. You know, enough zeros to impress your accountant. And he said, I'm here to help you. You're only 25 years old. You've been to one year of college. You've got a beautiful family, every reason to do it. Why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? And he said, here's why. And I thought, he doesn't need to teach me why. Wouldn't it be nice to have a million dollars? He said, no, then you'll miss it. He said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve. I'm telling you, that statement changed my life. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve it. He said, now, once you become a millionaire, what's important is not the money. I thought, that's kind of strange teaching. He said, honest, it isn't important. He said, you could just give the money away. Now, I did better than that. I lost it all. By the time I was 31, I was a millionaire. By the time I was 33, I was broke. But when I lost all my money, guess what? I found out Mr. Shope was right. What was valuable was not the money. What was valuable was what I became to earn the money. The skills I had, the knowledge I had about the marketplace, the values that I had going for me, they were more valuable than the money. And here's an important statement to remember. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become. So part of the key here is to set the kind of goals that will make something of you. Don't set them too low so that you don't have to grow and you don't have to read and you don't have to try and you don't have to stretch. Don't set them too low. And then don't sell out. Don't go for something that's going to cost you your virtue or cost you your values or sell out your principles. There's a good middle road here to follow. Goals that will inspire. Goals that will help you grow, change, develop, and become better than you.